Hi everybody, it's Tristan from World English School and today I'm gonna do this book. It's a David Shannon book. It's called The Amazing Christmas Extravaganza. And this is really exciting because uh, this is the uh, same author of No David. David Goes to School, Grow Up David, all of the David books. Really like his, uh, his work. So let's take a look. This is my first time to read it. Have you ever seen this book? The Amazing Christmas Extravaganza by David Shannon. It all started with one little string of tiny white Christmas lights. In the past, Mr. Merriweather had been happy celebrating Christmas with his wife and their children, Matthew and Sarah. Each year he made a big show of getting the box of ornaments down from the attic. Then the Merriweather family decorated the tree together and hung a wreath on the front door. Right there, see? But this Christmas was different. The Merriweather family in there. This is every year, right? But this Christmas is different. This year we're really going to celebrate Christmas, he announced. This year we're going to put lights on the house. They were all very excited. Mrs. Merriweather clapped her hands and Sarah hopped on one foot. Then Mr. Merriweather hauled his ladder outside and tacked up a small string of white lights around the front window. Just like in the picture there, see? That's fine, he said, admiring his handiwork. He left the lights on all night so he could see the glow from his bedroom, and he went to sleep a happy man. <laughs> Does your dad do this? <laughs> My dad did it one year, I think, maybe two. He didn't like doing it too much because it's a lot of work. Mr. Merriweather's a happy man. <laughs> kind of a shrimpy little string of lights you got there, pal. Mr. Mer Merriweather stopped shoveling and turned to see Mr. Clack, his neighbor from across the street. <laughs> Wait till you see my house, Mr. Clack bragged. I got 17 strings of lights and they blink on and off. Mr. Merriweather was suddenly embarrassed. Well. I'm not done yet. You wait till I'm finished and then I guess you'll see something. He pulled his hat down over his ears and went back to his shoveling. So now Mr. Clack and Mr. Merriweather are going to have a little competition, huh? This is Mr. Clack's house, I suppose. Yeah, he does have a lot more lights, doesn't he? Mr. Merriweather's just one window, right? Let's see what happens here. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> that afternoon, Mr. Merriweather gathered up his kids and drove the station wagon to five big department stores. He bought so many Christmas decorations that he couldn't close the tailgate. Couldn't even close the back of the car. He could hardly wait to get home and put them all up. <laughs> Can we really afford all that? Mrs. Merriweather, Mrs. Merriweather asked when she saw the decorations. Of course we can, honey, Mr. Merriweather said. It's Christmas. <laughs> that night he peeked out of his bedroom window and saw Mr. Clack staring up at the new display. He chuckled to himself when Mr. Clack kicked some snow and stomped home. They're having a big competition it looks like, huh? And now he's beaten Mr. Clack for now. Let's see what Mr. Clack does. The next day, all of Mr. Merriweather's neighbors stopped by to tell him how wonderful his house looked. He had never gotten so many compliments. They made him feel giddy and full inside, like he'd just eaten a big dinner. But still, he thought, there was room for improvement. Every morning for the next week, Mr. Merriweather fired up the old station wagon and went in search of more decorations, which he carefully added on to his house with the seriousness of a true artist. And every evening, the neighbors and their kids came out to see the new wonders sprouting from the house of lights. Magnificent, the neighbors exclaimed. Awesome! Matthews and Sarah's friends told them they were lucky to have such a great dad. Yeah, Matthew said, a little puzzled. He's really something. <laughs> he doesn't understand. Why is his dad so great? Do you think your dad's cool? Sometimes I thought my dad was doing funny things too. That's what Matthew thinks, huh? Mrs. Merriweather tried to be understanding, but she was worried. Christmas Day would be here soon, and it seemed that her husband could only think of colored lights and plastic candles. She was relieved when Mr. Merriweather told her he had been to every store he could find, and there was nothing left to buy. 
Then she heard the hammer banging and the saw buzzing in the garage. <laughs> We're in Tokyo right now, and do you hear the, the hammering and the buzzing? A lot of construction. That's how it sounds here in the book. And Mrs. Merriweather <laughs> is really worried. <laughs> Several days later, Mr. Merriweather un unveiled what he had made. <laughs> it's truly an extravaganza, the neighbors gasped. Mr. Merriweather flipped the switch and a recording of the 12 days of Christmas blared out of loudspeakers. Life-sized wooden cutouts filled the yard, representing each of the 12 days. There were maids a-milkin, geese a-lane, lords a-leaping, and even a partridge in a pear tree. Like from the song, right? <laughs> and this is nothing, shouted Mr. Merriweather. You should see what I'm building next. <laughs> Terrific, muttered Mr. Clack. I like celebrating Christmas as much as the next guy, but this is ridiculous. Mr. Merriweather was no longer thinking about Christmas, however. He was thinking about bigger, brighter, and more. He's gone crazy. Is this the purpose of Christmas? Does he have it right? Look at all that stuff. The next night, Mr. Merriweather was back at his work on his extravaganza. You better come down now, dear, <laughs> Mrs. Merriweather called up to him. The children are in the Christmas program tonight. <laughs> Sorry, no time, Mr. Merriweather mumbled through his, a mouthful of nails. I've got too much to do. You go on without me. It was hopeless. Mrs. Merriweather tried to explain to Matthew and Sarah that their father was a very busy man. <laughs> I think he's gone a little wacko, Matthew said. Hush, his mother scolded. Don't talk about your father that way. I think Matthew may be right. What do you think? Has Mr. Merriweather gone wacko? <laughs> Look, in the school, the kids are going to, there's Matthew and Sarah <laughs> going to their play at school. And Mr. Merriweather is busy. Mrs. Merriweather says, come on, honey, let's go to the play. Look at this. Mr. Merriweather's display continued to grow. One day, he put up Santa's workshop, complete with elves. The next day, he added a giant snowman. He j added giant snowmen made of styrofoam. And finally, he built a 50-foot Santa with a mechanical arm that waved. <laughs> like the marshmallow man from uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> it's giant. <laughs> Look at this place, it's crazy. Mr. Merriweather has created a, a mall display. This is like Disney Christmas or something. <laughs> Crazy. Does he get more and more? People from three countries away brought their, their children to see the now famous Merriweather front yard. But it wasn't so much fun anymore for the people who lived nearby. The extravaganza used so much electricity that there was hardly any left for the neighbors. Their Christmas trees were dim and dull and their Christmas cookies came out doughy from ovens that wouldn't heat. The noise came from the sightseers honking and yelling was so loud that the annual Christmas caroling had to be canceled. No one could hear the singers. People visiting their families got stranded for hours in the tangle of traffic. Sometimes they just gave up and went home. Mr. Merriweather didn't even notice. He sat snugly in his brightly lit home, humming along with the 12th days of Christmas. <laughs> He doesn't care. He's enjoying. Look at that. Just singing songs and enjoying his house. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Finally, the neighbors decided something had to be done. On Christmas Eve, they held a meeting at Mr. Clack's house. Let's call the cops, someone shouted. Let's take him to court, screamed another. Now, wait a minute, said Mr. Clack. We don't want to look like a bunch of Scrooges. Just then, all the lights in the neighborhood went out. Up and down the street, everything was black. Everything, that is, except the Christmas extravaganza, which glowed brighter than ever. <laughs> That's the last straw, roared Mr. Clack. I don't care what people think. I say we tear it down ourselves, tonight. Everyone yelled in agreement. Then they armed themselves with tools of destruction and swarmed over Mr. Merriweather's front yard, slashing, bashing, and trashing everything in sight. Look at this, an angry mob. 
like uh, Mr. Merriweather is Frankenstein or something. Frankenstein's monster. They are angry. <laughs> Look at this. She's got a plunger. So this is <laughs> it's funny, man. Look at this. Mr. Merriweather and his wife woke up in midair. <laughs> they jumped up. Oh my, oh no, he wailed. What is it, cried the children, running into the room. I think it's an earthquake, Mr. Merriweather exclaimed. They all dove under the bed and huddled there together, listening to the terrible screeching, cracking, and thumping. It lasted all night long. <laughs> Finally, the noises stopped. Mr. Merriweather poked his head out from under the bed. It was morning, Christmas morning. He ran downstairs, opened the front door, and couldn't believe what he saw. I love that. <laughs> they woke up in midair. <laughs> They jumped out of bed before they woke up. <laughs> Man, what's gonna happen? Oh, <laughs> look at that. And look at him. Man, that's Mr. Clack looking angry. The Christmas extravaganza was gone. Yesterday, giant snowflakes, Santa Clauses, reindeer, and lights had decorated his house and yard. Now, there was only a huge pile of sputtering rubble. Mr. Clack and the rest of the mob were still standing around. Their heavy breath steamed in the cold morning air. <laughs> I guess that'll teach you to muck up our neighborhood, Mr. Clack sneered. Look at that sneer. Yeah. And that neighbors are angry. And he, <laughs> look at this guy. He's got a rolling pin and he looks like he's satisfied. He's wearing, oh no, that's a, that's a lady, sorry. She's wearing a little hat. Oh man. These people are not fooling around, huh? They really destroyed that yard. Mr. Merriweather felt as if he'd been hit by a log. He could barely talk. But, but, but I was just celebrating Christmas, he said. I didn't know it bothered you. I thought you liked it. The neighbors were silent. No longer caught up in their attack, they looked at each other and began to think about what they had done. And they were ashamed. I'm sorry, Mr. Clack said sheepishly. He picked up a pair of broken reindeer antlers. Here, he said, we'll help you put it all back together again. We'll make it even better. Mr. Merriweather shook his head. No, he said, I think some nice little white lights will do just fine. He pulled the tiny string out of the smoking heap and Mr. Clack and all the neighbors helped him tack it up around the front window. Remember at the beginning, he used the same lights, didn't he? And see now he's using them again. It's gonna start over. You hear the destruction all around us? <laughs> this is what it sounded like in Mr. Clack's yard. <laughs> oh no, in Mr. Merriweather's yard. <laughs> Mrs. Merriweather brought out cups of hot cider and the whole neighborhood admired Mr. Merriweather's little string of white lights, his fine tree and his beautiful wreath. You know, Mr. Merriweather, Mr. Clack said, that really was an amazing Christmas extravaganza. Thank you, replied Mr. Merriweather, but these are my real masterpieces. He hugged Matthew and then swung Sarah high up into the air. Uh, Mrs. Merriweather took her husband by the arm. Don't feel bad, dear, she said. Everybody should be able to celebrate Christmas in his own way, whether it's with lots of lights or none at all. Yours just got so big there wasn't room for anyone else. Well, I've learned my lesson, Mr. Merriweather said with a sigh. I guess I got carried away. I think everyone did, Mrs. Merriweather said. But I'm proud of you. I didn't know you were so artistic. Mr. Merriweather smiled. He gazed at his children, his friends, and his big mound of junk. He noticed that several large pieces of wood were still in good condition. Hmm, he wondered out loud. How many days till Easter? <laughs> He's gonna do the same thing. He didn't learn his, he says right here, well, I've learned my lesson. Did Mr. Merriweather really learn his lesson? Hmm. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> he did the same thing. But actually this time, he, actually, you know what? I think he did learn his lesson, look at that. Look, it's, it's not using much electricity, is it? And he used the same supplies as before. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe he did learn his lesson. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, look. 
That's cute, isn't it? It says Scholastic on a little Christmas tag. Well, that's a great book, man. That's a 1995 book, and that's called um, The Amazing Christmas Extravaganza by David Shannon. Man, David Shannon really, really does some nice books. So I hope I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, take a look at his books if you want on Amazon or whatever. It's available. And uh, oh look, the lights just turned on. There's an, a Christmas okay. extravaganza here in Tokyo, in Shinjuku, Tokyo. We're having a Christmas extravaganza. Look, does it look like this? It's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Well, guys, thanks for watching, and Merry Christmas.